Okay, let's look at this question number four from exercise 16 in electrostatics. This is a nice, interesting question that you should definitely pay attention to. So a light sphere R with a charge of 20 nanocoulombs hangs from a thin string of negligible mass. R is repelled by a sphere S with a charge of 40 nanocoulombs and then remains in equilibrium when the distance between the spheres is 40 millimeters as shown in the sketch. Okay, now people, we have here a string with tension, we have a ball with mass, we have an electrostatic force. We are about to conduct a calculation that is going to join you with all the stuff we did in Newton's laws with this now. So you need to pay attention. There's been a couple like this in the exam questions. Okay. All right. So they are in equilibrium. That's the most important part here. So now the first part of this is easy. Calculate the Coulombic force between the spheres. You see me writing my formula here. F equals K Q1 Q2 over R squared. Make sure you write the formula every single time. Okay. So F equals K times Q1, which is 20 times 10 to the negative 9, because a nanocoulombs times 10 to the negative 9. The other one is 40 times 10 to the negative 9, because they're both nanocoulombs, and they're both positive charges. And this is over the distance between them, 40 millimeters. So this is going to be 40 times 10 to the negative 3 because it's a millimeter all squared. Okay, now plug this in your calculator. Remember, you always need to check me with your calculator because you know I'm not the genius at the calculator. But I look like I have a correct answer here. So I get a force of 4,5 times 10 to the power of negative 3. This will be Newtons, okay, because we've put all the SI units in, so we will get the force out in Newtons. 4,5 times 10 to the negative 3, repulsion. Okay, we know that this is repulsion because the charges are the same, like charges repel. Now it says to you, draw and label a force diagram of all the forces acting on R. So I'm going to try to do this here on the diagram. What is acting on R? Okay, did not tell you R was massless. So there is a force acting downwards here. Yes. Okay, it's going to have to live in blue because it wants to be in blue. Here we go. Now it's in black. So what are we going to call this force if I could type here? Let's see if we can make this longer. It's going to be Fg. Okay, so we're going to have Fg over there. I can't type it on there. What else is going on here? We have another force. Yes. What other force do we have? We have tension up the string here. Okay. So we have tension up the string there. And now, so obviously that's going to be T. Okay. And then what is my other force? My other force is my electrostatic force, which I'm going to call F sub E. Okay, so you need to see it as F sub E. Where is this force going to go? We've got the tension up the string. We've got the weight vertically downwards. What is this electrostatic force doing? These two are like charges. Is it making this thing come this way, R towards S, or is it making R move away from S? It is making R move away from S. So the force is going to be like that. That is going to be the electrostatic force that you will see there. Okay, so those are our three forces that are acting here. The weight, the electrostatic force of repulsion, and the tension up the string. So it says to you, draw and label a force diagram of all the forces acting on R. If this was a, a exam, you realize that you would have a mark allocation to guide you to the number of forces, okay? So, but it's not an exam, so I'm telling you there are these three forces. Now it says to you, sphere R has a weight of one gram. Calculate the tension in the string that holds up R. Ha ha. We have three forces in equilibrium, okay? So, 
what we would normally do if we're in equilibrium you could work out the tension you could say okay the electrostatic force to the left is equal to the horizontal component of the tension in the string because it's in equilibrium or you could say the uh, vertically downwards weight is equal to the vertically upwards component of the tension in the string but we can't do that because we don't have a theta okay sometimes you get these questions they've got a theta and then you can just work out the components using sine and cos of the components but what do we need to remember about systems that are in equilibrium if we have a system in equilibrium you can turn it into a closed vector diagram okay so here is the proper force diagram for this okay can you see here is the force diagram with fe fg ft and they've drawn in a theta here so if a system is in equilibrium you can make a closed vector diagram and in this case it's a right angle triangle so can you see here we've picked up this electrostatic force and put it at the base of the triangle we've picked up this gravitational force and we've put it at up here and can you see we've got a head to tail closed vector diagram so what is this this is a dun 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 right angle triangle so the moment you have a right angle triangle okay you can then calculate you can calculate where is this going to type oh good you can calculate the forces here we already know fe okay how do we know fe we know fe because we just did a calculation do you agree okay so fe is this value over here so that is going to be the bottom of my triangle what is the vertical side of my triangle it is fg how do we calculate fg we put the mass in what unit we put the mass in kilograms so one gram is 0 0.001 kilograms and we multiply this by the acceleration due to gravity so you can do this and you get 0 0.0098 newtons okay so we've got the base of the triangle we've got the vertex the other uh, straight line of the triangle we can find the hypotenuse so ft the tension in the string we can calculate the value okay and it is going to be equal to okay i can't do the whole ft squared equals you know a squared plus b squared equals c squared so we're just going to write the square root yes because i can't put the square root sign in do you want me to look for the square root sign shall i look for the square root sign what a nuisance here's the square root sign okay so everything's under the square root here okay 0 comma 0 0 9 8 squared times times that what is the other side of my triangle 4.5 times 10 to the negative 3 all squared okay so let's have a look here what will my ft be equal to put this in your calculator um, you know i don't like doing the square root thing i get something like uh, I think I've done something wrong here let me just check this answer here 0 0.0098 I hope you're doing this in your calculator oh I've multiplied these why am I multiplying these you need to add these your teacher can't do Pythagoras good thing she's not a maths teacher okay a squared plus b squared equals c squared sorry no wonder my answer looked strange okay and i want to square root this i will end up with i've got 1 comma 07 oh it's not in there 1 comma 07 times 10 to the negative 2 newtons it's actually 1 comma 08 1 comma 08 
times 10 to the negative 10 to the negative 2 newtons. Okay, so now it says calculate the tension in the string. If it just asks for the magnitude, we're okay just putting this value, and we can say this is up the string, okay? But if you want to go one step further, you can work out this angle theta, because we know tan theta is opposite over adjacent, okay? So tan theta equals opposite over adjacent. So then tan theta is going to be opposite, opposite is gravity, 0, 0,0098 divided by adjacent 4,05 times 4,5 times 10 to the negative 3. Okay, and then you're just going to shift tan this. Okay, and then I work out theta equals, I think it is 65,34 degrees. So then you can finally state your answer and you can say the tension is this many newtons, okay, at an angle of 65,3, uh-uh, that's very irritating, 65,3, where's my mouse gone, 65,34 degrees above the horizontal, 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 in the direction of S. Okay, so we're assuming that this is, well, I suppose this is to the right, so we could say or to the right. Okay, so you see how once you've got something that is in Newtons, you can compare it to anything else in Newtons. So that is how you work out these questions like this, where they suddenly give you a mass and you have to work stuff out, and they're more common than you think. So, good luck with this.